Alternating Current Introduction A current which flows first in one direction in a circuit, called the positive direction, then in the reverse or negative direction, as shown in the figure, is called an alternating current. The figure shows the AC, which is a cycle repeated continuously and has an average value of zero over a period of time t. The current changes its direction in every t by 2 seconds. Since the variation of current is periodic, it can be represented by sine or a cosine function. Is a sine wave representing the variation of current? The value of current I at any instant is given above. AC voltage applied to a resistor. Let an alternating source of EMF be connected across a resistor with resistance R. The instantaneous value of the applied EMF is shown. When I is the current through the circuit at the instant T, the potential drop across R is E equals IR. Potential drop must be equal to the applied EMF as shown. From the expression of voltage and current given by the equation 1 and 2, it is evident that in a resistive circuit, the applied voltage and the currents are in phase with each other. The phase relationship between the current and the voltage is shown by the phasor diagram. AC voltage applied to an inductor. Let an alternating source of EMF be applied to a pure inductor of inductance I. The inductor has a negligible resistance and is wound on a laminated iron core due to an alternating EMF that is applied to the inductive coil. A self-induced EMF is generated which opposes the applied voltage. Example, choke coil. A comparison of the source voltage and the current in an inductor shows that the current lags the voltage by pi by 2 or 1 quarter cycle. Figure A shows the voltage and the current phases in the present case at instant T1. The current phasor I is pi by 2 behind the voltage phasor V. When rotated at frequency omega counterclockwise, they generate the voltage and current given by the equations and as shown in the figure. The average power supplied to an inductor over one complete cycle is zero. The figure shown above explains this in detail. Zero to one, current I through the coil entering at A increase from zero to a maximum value. Flux lines are set up, that is, the core gets magnetized. When the polarity shown voltage and current are both positive, so their product P is positive. Energy is absorbed from the source. One to two, current in the coil is still positive but is decreasing. The core gets demagnetized and the net flux becomes zero at the end of a half cycle. The voltage V is negative. The product of voltage and current is negative and the energy is being returned to the source. Two to three, current I becomes negative, that is it enters B and comes out of A. Since the direction of current is changed, the polarity of the magnet changes. The current and the voltage are both negative, so their product P is positive, that is energy is absorbed. Three to four. Current I decreases and reaches its zero value at 4 when core is demagnetized and flux is zero. The voltage is positive but the current is negative. Energy absorbed during the quarter cycle 2-3 is returned to the source. 
An alternating source of EMF is connected across a capacitance C. It is charged first in one direction and then in the other direction. The instantaneous value of the applied EMF is given at any instant. The potential difference across the capacitor will be equal to the applied EMF. Hence, a capacitor offers infinite resistance to DC for an AC. The capacitive reactance varies inversely as the frequency of AC and also inversely as the capacitance of the capacitor. A comparison of the source voltage and the current in the capacitor shows that the current is pi by 2 ahead of voltage. The figure above shows the phasor diagram at instant T1. Here the current phasor I is pi by 2 ahead of the voltage phasor V as they rotate counterclockwise. Figure B shows the variation of voltage and current with time. We see that the current reaches its maximum value earlier than the voltage by one fourth of a period. We see that current lags behind the voltage by pi by 2 and in the case of a capacitor, the current leads the voltage by pi by 2. The figure explains this in detail. 0, 1. The current I flows is shown from the maximum at 0. Which is a 0 value at 1. The plate A is charged to positive polarity while negative charge Q builds up in B reaching a maximum at 1 until the current becomes 0. The voltage Vc which equals Q by C is in phase with Q and reaches maximum value at 1. Current and voltage are both positive. Energy is absorbed from the source during the quarter cycle as the capacitor is charged. 1, 2. The current I reverses its direction. The accumulated charge is depleted, that is the capacitor is discharged during this quarter cycle. The voltage gets reduced but is still positive. The current is negative, their product, the power, is negative. The energy absorbed during the quarter cycle 0, 1 is returned during this quarter. Two, three. As I continues to flow from A to B, the capacitor is charged to reverse polarity. That is, the plate B acquires positive and A acquires negative charge. Both the current and the voltages are negative. Their product P is positive. The capacitor absorbs energy during this quarter cycle. Four, the current I reverses its direction at three and flows from B to A. The accumulated charge is depleted and the magnitude of the voltage Vc is reduced. Vc becomes zero at four when the capacitor is fully discharged. The power is negative. Energy absorbed during two, three is returned to the source and net energy absorbed is zero. AC circuit containing resistance, inductance and capacitance. When an AC source is connected in a circuit with a resistance and a reactance together, the current varies initially in a complex way. After sufficient time, a sinusoidally varying current persists in the circuit. This steady state current has a frequency equal to that of source and may have a phase difference with the source voltage. As the three elements are in series, the current has the same amplitude and phase in all. Therefore, voltage across R is in phase with the current. The voltage across L leads the current by 90 degrees and the voltage across C lags the current by 90 degrees. The phasor diagram is as follows. If the LCR circuit is predominantly an inductive circuit, that is EOL greater than EOC, then the effective value of E would be obtained as shown above. When Z represents the total effective opposition offered by LCR circuit to AC and is called impedance. Theta is the phase angle which indicates the effective EMF that leads the current. If I equals I naught sin omega t, then the voltage in the LCR circuit would be E equals E naught sin omega t plus theta. Please note it's sin of omega t plus theta, where E naught equals I naught z, theta equals tan inverse of xl minus xc, the whole by r. Resonance. 
An interesting characteristic of the series RLC circuit is the phenomenon of resonance. The phenomenon of resonance is common among systems that have a tendency to oscillate at a particular frequency. This frequency is called the system's natural frequency. If such a system is driven by an energy source at a frequency that is near the natural frequency, the amplitude of oscillation is found to be large. For an RLC circuit driven with voltage of amplitude Vm and frequency omega, we found that the current amplitude is given by derivation as shown above. LC oscillation Capacitors and inductors are capable of storing energy in the electric field and magnetic field respectively. No AC elements, that is capacitor inductor are pure. In other words, each of them do have some resistance. The charges of current through these elements lose their energy as heat due to the resistance. The energy is radiated away from the electromagnetic wave, which is the basis of radio TV transmission. As the circuits give away this energy, this loss has to be replenished. This is done by using an LC circuit. Consider the circuit above. The capacitor when charged is connected to the inductor. The capacitor starts discharging, that is the charges on capacitor start decreasing. This means its magnitude and direction keeps changing. The charge of the capacitors going through the inductor generates a magnetic field and thereby some energy is stored in the magnetic field. The current slowly reaches a maximum when the capacitor is fully discharged. The induced current in the inductor opposes this and charges the capacitor in opposite direction. The oscillations in an LC circuit are analogous to the oscillations of a block at the end of a spring. The figure given above depicts one half of a cycle. Transformer a transformer is a device which transforms electric power in one circuit into electric power of same frequency in another circuit. It can raise, that is step up, or lower, that is step down, the voltage in a circuit with a corresponding decrease or increase in current. Thus, transformer is a device used to transform low voltage high current to high voltage low current and vice versa. This transformation of voltage is possible only with alternating current, that is AC, but not with the direct current which is DC. A transformer consists of two insulated mutually coupled coils of wire wound on a continuous iron core. One of the coils is called a primary coil and the other one a secondary coil. The primary P is connected to a source of EMF and the secondary to a load, maybe a resistor or an electrical device. In the figure, the core is made of closed rectangular steel laminations assembled to prove a continuous magnetic path. When AC passes through the primary, an alternating magnetic field is formed in the core. If the core is close to 1, the flux leakage will be minimum. Then the flux linkage in the primary and the secondary will be almost equal. Due to this alternating flux linkage, an EMF is induced in the secondary. This is due to mutual induction. At the same time, back EMF is induced in the primary due to self-induction. Let N1 and N2 be the number of turns in the primary and the secondary. E1 and E2 be the induced EMF in the primary and secondary respectively. Then the output and input EMF are as follows. N2 by N1 is called transformer ratio. If N2 greater than N1, the transformer is a step up one as shown in the figure. In these transformers, the primary is made of thick insulated copper wire and the secondary is made of a thin wire. If N2 lesser than N1, the transformer is a step down transformer as shown in the figure. In an ideal transformer, input and output powers are equal, that is, V1 I1 equals V2 I2, where V1 and V2 are effective values of EMFs in primary and secondary. I1 and I2 are effective values of currents in primary and secondary of the transformer respectively. The efficiency of transformer is the ratio of output power to the input power and is generally expressed as shown above.